morning, everyone, and welcome to our Learn On webinar series. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about getting started with Nearpod. Uh, my name is Ben Smith, and I'm the Supervisor of Educational Technology at the uh, Lincoln Intermediate Unit. Here's the team that we have that is um, producing all the content for the, the Learn On website, including the webinars. You can see my contact information is highlighted there should you have any questions as we finish up and we take care of this webinar. Uh, I'm really happy that you guys uh, have joined me here because Nearpod is one of my favorite tools. Um, uh, I began with this well back in the classroom uh, using it with students. And what I really liked about it was the fact that it has um, built in formative assessment tools. And um, it also allows you to work both live with students and asynchronously. So I think it's, it's really a great tool um, uh, for this time during school closures that you can use with your students. Um, so, you know, these are very short webinars. You know, we're gonna try and, uh, you know, I, I've tried to call this getting started. So um, we're gonna go through some of the features, show you what it looks like on both the student side and the teacher side. And um, uh, that's why you see IU sample student, um, uh, logged in there as one of your panelists. That's also me. Uh, I have two computers here going that I'm going to try and demonstrate this for you with. Um, but really, at the end, I just want you to know how to use Nearpod uh, for teaching synchronously and asynchronously so that, um, so that you can make use of it. So um, having said that, I really, I, I do want to caution you right from the beginning that Nearpod costs money. Now they have a free version. So you can see the silver version, which they call free, um, allows you to create and teach interactive lessons and videos. So, um, so if you're creating your own <clears throat> content, um, you, can, um, you can make use of Nearpod in this way. When you move to the gold standard, uh, where you see it says $120 um, a year. And I will point out that there is discounted pricing on that through the intermediate units that you can email us and we can provide you with that pricing. So it's, it is discounted from that. I believe it's now $90 instead of $120 a year. Um, but what you ga gain from the gold side is that you can create more lessons. You can use, um, uh, they have more interactive features that are available for the gold platform. So. Um, under silver, you can do a lot, uh, you know, uh, creating lessons. Gold allows you a little more interactivity with that. And then platinum gives you the access to the pre-made lessons. And so um, that's usually done on a school level. Um, I'm going to show you what some of the lessons look like uh, so you get a, a feel for what's happening there. Um, right now, I will tell you, though, that that with Nearpod, they, you know, some of the tools have gone free. Nearpod hasn't quite done that. Instead, what they're saying is if you want access right now, you have to fill out a form. And so, um, and that form is really for school-wide access. And so you could complete it and request it. And then they'll sort of work to see, you know, what, what's, the, um, what's happening with your school. So just keep this in mind as you watch this webinar, because I don't want you to walk away saying, well, I wish I could do all those things. And, and then some of them you, you can't do. So um, that's, the, that's the first part. Now, I just want to get started with Nearpod. And I put in some, some placeholders here um, for uh, Nearpod so that when you look at the slide deck, and, um, and with that, I'll, I'll drop the slide deck into the chat for you. <clears throat> so there's the slide deck for you. Um, they're placeholders. So what I really want to do is I want to jump over to Nearpod. So I'm going to switch my tab over here and, um, and show you what Nearpod looks like. So please note, that right up here in the corner, it says school user. So for RIU as an account, um, we're actually a school user. Um, so when you think about it, we have access to some of the content. So if you go into your account and you see that it says something different, like it might say silver user or gold user, um, then that may change what you have access to. So, um, so keep that in mind. But I'm gonna start out um, here that if I'm in 
Nearpod, you can see as I look down the left side, it does have a school library and it has a less Nearpod lesson library. I'll come back to those things, but you can see I'm on my library right now. And so the things that you see in here are, are actually um, parts of my library. And when I think about like where I, I use these, uh, I was a teacher back in Redline Area School District. You can see like this one that I roll over and I, I can't show you and see it, but when, um, but when you see um, access to it, um, you'll see that I created that back on September 1st of, of 2015, and I used it as joint council, so I actually used it as a part of professional development um, for them. And then you can see some of the other ones so that, that I've been using. So as a part of this account, as they migrated over, you can see I used it for back to school night. Um, I used it for uh, sharing out some of my AP results. And then some of the other places that I use as you go through. So this is my library of all the elements. Now, one of the questions that came in is, does everybody at the LIU have full access? And the answer is no, um, uh, that is not the case, but you can um, get access and it would be really program by program um, uh, as to where you go and, and, and make use of this. The one thing I will say for me when I was back in the classroom, and I know as educators, you know, like we, we spend a lot of our own money doing things. This is one of those subscriptions that I did pay for for myself so that I could get access to uh, some of those materials. So I only ported over to my, my new account, my IU account, I only ported over some of the lessons just to be able to sort of show you. But if you're looking to get started, what you'll see is you can create a lesson in Google Slides. Now that's new. And, and I'll, um, I'll come back to that. But you can do a lesson in Nearpod. So that's what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna click on lesson in Nearpod. And you come up to a very simple window and really what you're doing is you're putting together a slide deck. And the slide deck that you put together um, is, is um, very similar to Google Slides or to PowerPoint. With, um, with a little bit of an exception that it has the interactivity. So when I click here, you can see I can, um, I can start here and you'll see that it also says, make your lessons more interactive, convert slides to draw it. So I'm just gonna click okay. So I can actually get students to be able to draw on slides, but I'm gonna hit add slide. And when I do, I have three choices. One choice is to add content, another is to add web content, and another is to add activity. So I'll just go through these one by one. And again, in our short amount of time, I can't go through everything that, that we wanna do, but when I hit add content, you'll see that there are a lot of pieces that I can actually um, add in. And I'll just click on the slide for a moment, pop out of the way so you can really see that well. Um, so when I click on slide, it opens up and it looks just like a normal slide. So, um, so this is a slide. Uh, I can choose, you know, what type of format I might want. And then I can add content in here. I can drag and drop um, uh, things. I can uh, upload files here. Um, I can add text or video or images. And I, so I, I might just start out by saying, uh, you know, And then, you know, um, uh, step one, step two, and so forth. So I would just, I would just create what I want uh, there. You can see that I can change the, the background and the layout and all those types of things and these themes. I'm just gonna slide that away so you can see it. And then when I'm done, I'll just hit save and exit. So, so now I've saved that slide. Okay, so there it is. And, you could you could build out your content however you might want now there is going to be a size limitation on it and it'll keep this size limitation for you uh, right there but let me go back to add a slide so when i go back to add a slide and let's dive into the add content again um, you'll see that they have uh, links to lots of different things so we talked earlier about FET simulations and how great they are those are science and math simulations that you can um, that you can take a look at, and you can see that they have, they have them uh, sort of set up for you. So if I'm a middle school math teacher, I'd be like, you know what, I want to add in this FET simulation or or one of these, and just click and hit done, and then it will add that that in. And so it just added it as another slide, so that if you want to have interactivity in there, or you want to have the students sort of building, you can do that. 
So now I'm going to go back in, I'm going to add another slide, and I'm going to go back to that content piece. And you'll have to explore here. Um, there are, uh, when you pay for, for Nearpod, you can actually get um, some VR lessons, field trips, uh, that are really uh, great. And if students have the, um, the goggles, uh, they can take like a, a phone and put it in there and they can use that for VR. Um, when we go over here, you can see like they have Desmos built in. Uh, so they have a graphing calculator. So again, if you're teaching math, that's great. Um, if you have any videos from BBC or Sway, uh, you, can, you can do that. You can also add video in. And then when I click on any, um, any of these pieces, you can see like I can put in PDFs, I click on a video, I can do a safe search on YouTube for content that I want to add into here. So like, there's all kinds of ways to get content in. It's very rich. Um, in addition, you can upload your own videos or you can drop them in from Drive. So if you have videos basically anywhere that you might want, you can get them into, um, into your content. So that's all under, um, under the content slide. Now, if you want to add a web page, you can do that as well. And so, um, like if I was doing um, current events or something like that, uh, I could add in um, Newzella, right? And I can test that link. And then I can say, okay, that's good. And so I'm going to save that. And then it's going to bring that web page and it's going to be dynamic to that particular day. So now you can see I've started to build out my slide deck and I have uh, three different slides in there. So, so this can all be really helpful in terms of what you want to add. But the powerful piece is when you add activity. So when I click on add activity, it has a number of these different things here. So um, like time to climb, that's actually, um, it's like a, a, a race for students where you can ask a series of questions and they race to see who can get to the top. So think about like adding math facts in there or something like that where the students just keep going up and up and up. Um, you can add an open-ended question. You can add matching pairs, a quiz, a Flipgrid. So we talked about Flipgrid and how that integrates in um, as well. You can uh, have students draw it. So I like this for, for graphs or predictions or even solving problems out where they can mark them up, um, a poll, collaborate, you know, memory tests, all these types of things. So if I ask an open-ended question, for example, so I clicked on open-ended question. Um, so I could ask my question here, I could add, um, <clears throat> video references or things like that. And I can enable students to be able to record their answer to this. I can also put a timer on it. So when you see on a timer, I could say, well, you have one minute um, to complete the activity. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on that again. You'll see it says your students will have this much time to complete the activity. So that timer will click down as they go. So this is perfect for like a bell ringer type activity where you wanna start them out and you wanna get some, some feedback on for students. And so when I'm done again, I'm gonna go down to the bottom, I'm gonna hit save. So this is my lesson and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a title here. Let's see. All right. Uh, so uh, and, and you can see as I add content, the size of that is is being um, increased there. I could also, if I had had a PowerPoint, I could have just dragged and dropped that PowerPoint in. And so um, if you have something in Google Slides and you want to bring it in here, although I'll show you another way, what you could do is download it as a PowerPoint or a PDF upload it here, each page will be a slide. And then, you know, you can start to reorder the slides, so you can move them around, you can delete slides, you can copy and paste those slides. And, um, and then when you're done, you're ready to exit. And so uh, here it is, I'm gonna have to give, I'm gonna have to give um, a description, so. And then I have to, like if I hit save and exit, it's going to tell me, nope, you got to put in the grades and the subject area. So uh, I'm going to mark this as PD. And then um, uh, for, um, for the, the 
content area, the subject area, you can see I have professional development. I'm going to link that there. I'm going to hit save and exit. So this is perfect for using for yourself. And now you can see that that lesson is right here. So now what do I do? Okay. Um, if I, if I want to uh, go through this and I'm going to, uh, so now I'm going to do this together as a, with you as a live lesson. So when I hit live lesson, it's going to turn this on and it's going to give us a code. Okay. So the code is, um, uh, is on the screen there. So any of you that actually want to go in and do that, you could actually go in and do it. I'm just jotting my code down so that I don't lose it here as I, um, as I go through to do the next step. So, so now it says students join this code at join.nearpod.com or in the app. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to another um, uh, to another place here where I have the join.nearpod.com, and I want to show it to you from a student perspective uh, for a moment. And so give me a moment as I switch the camera view here. And so if you go to join.nearpod.com, what you should see is this screen that, that is now up where it says join a session. And so what I would do as the student is I would just type in MGCNY and I'll hit join. So now that's gonna join. Now what you can't see, and I'll show this part um, in a few moments, is what's happening on the, uh, on the teacher side, okay? And so, it comes in and it asks for my name. So I'm gonna say, IU student, and I'm gonna join the session. Now, the way I used this in the classroom was <clears throat> that I would actually have an iPad where I would hold my, my Nearpod, I could walk around the classroom, students with their devices would have this up, and then as I swipe on my, on my um, iPad, things would go, and what you'll see is, when I click on this screen, so as I, there's no place for me to really go. It sort of locked me in here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the teacher side. Now, I'll show you the teacher side in a moment. When I click on the teacher side, it actually automatically open, moves it for the students. So while you can't necessarily see my hands, what's happening is that as the teacher, I'm moving this. So even if your students are spread throughout uh, your school district at home, if you ran a Nearpod, you would be able to control what they see on their screen. So by, by clicking on that, so we could engage in this activity if we want, um, I'm gonna jump over to the website. And again, you'll see that it pulls up the website for me. And then I'm gonna jump over to the, to the question. And um, so you'll see that it says, time for a question, you'll have one minute. And, and what I'm gonna do, and, and in the upper right corner, you can see it, it has the, uh, the activity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit start activity. So it gives a countdown. And here's my answer. So I'm going to hit submit on that. So now, now that you've sort of seen what it looks like on the student side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch it back over so you can see this, the teacher side. So now on the teacher side, what you see is that the student came in and their answer was here. And if I wanted to share it out, I could share it out to everybody. The countdown clock is still going for the students. So for all the other students, their answers will be populating. If I, and none of you joined, uh, it looks like. But if you had joined, what you would have seen is, is the list of all the prompts in there. And so um, at the end of this, I can hit um, share, and then it would share that answer out and everybody would see that, and I can unshare if I want as I go back and forth. Uh, as I, as the teacher, um, I can click and scroll through, and this is how I control what students see. So if you were logged into this account, you would, your screen would be shifting as I shift back and forth. 
One thing you'll also notice is that you can add a new activity in here. So if I was like teaching a lesson, I was doing it live, and maybe I was doing it via Zoom like this. So if you imagine this via Zoom where I, I wouldn't share my screen, instead what I would do is I would just have my picture so you could see me. And I would tell everybody, join my Nearpod. And then I would um, be going through, but if I wanted to get information, I could just add in like an open-ended question or a draw it slide right on the fly and just add that information in and then the students would be able to participate right there. So this is one of the reasons why I think it's so powerful that it's a great tool for teaching synchronously. Now, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna um, leave this session. So you saw I hit the back arrow and I'm gonna go out of it. And the other option that I have for this is I can do this as a student-paced activity. So for the student paced activity, what you'll see is when I click on that, now you could go there the same way. And what I would encourage you to do, and I'm gonna put this into the chat, is if you go to nearpod.com, uh, join.nearpod.com, and you type in that code from now for the next 29 days, that's going to remain open. And you would be able to go through those slides at your own pace and you would be able to submit your answer and I would be able to see them. So you can do this at any time you want. And, and that makes it really effective for you to be able to use that with your students. Now, you can also take um, uh, that link, embed it or put it to Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams or Remind. And so if you use Remind, as we had talked about in one of our earlier webinars, you can just click right here and then it'll send all that information out and the students just tap and on their device, probably their phone, it's gonna come right up and they're gonna be ready to do their homework. So like, I like this because I could record myself. So when you think about those videos and the content that you could put in, you can record yourself, you can do lots of information and you can get the feedback. And if I go to View Progress, here, then what I'm gonna see is students who will have signed in. So if any of you take advantage of that and sign in, I'll be able to see your student, uh, see who you are and the progress you had as I go through. And so I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave out of there, but that lesson will still be going on uh, for you uh, throughout, the, um, uh, throughout the next uh, month. So, so that's, um, that's a lesson that you can create. Now, I did want to take a few moments uh, to, to talk to you about um, uh, the other pieces that are in um, um, Nearpod. So I'm going to jump over to the Nearpod lesson library. And what I want to show you is at least if you decided to, um, uh, to, to pay, you can take a look at this or your schools do for the content. They have math, science, social studies, life skills, right? You can see all of these pieces in here. Um, if, like if we took a look at math lessons and then we said, okay, well, you can see, you know, the grade levels they have, but they have shapes and geometry and it's K-12. They have algebra and it's grades three to 10. And I can click in here and I can see the different um, lessons. You can see there's five lessons for grades six through eight. And so I click in there and then, you know, you can get to a place where you're like, okay, um, here's graphing ratios. So I might be like, okay, that's a good lesson. And um, if you already have added it to your library, you, it'll say show in my library. If it doesn't, you would say add to my library. And so now you'd have it and you can preview and see um, the information they have. So they have information for you, um, like getting the students into um, pairs or, um, the guiding question, and you can see this is three slides through 32. Um, and so as I, as I go through, it has the objectives and it has places for you to get started, information, and then it has an open-ended question. So I'm previewing this lesson, but you can see like, are you ready to answer your, your uh, post your answer? What is a ratio and give an example? So they would put that in there. And as you go through, it's just built out for you. You don't have to, you, you know, so when I think about the preparation piece, I already have lots of slide decks for my students and lots of content. So for me, it was, I didn't need to pay for the content because I could just upload it. But if you're really struggling and you want to um, take a look at the rich content that they have, this is a great place that you can go and, and look at it. And 
when you um, when you think about the Nearpod lesson library, and I go in, you'll see that they have it um, by publisher, by Nearpod. They have um, holidays and events, special things. They have the Nearpod uh, VR. So they have college tours. So if you're like a school counselor or something like that, and you're looking for ways that you can work with students. They have um, uh, field trips, but they also have some free lessons. So you can go in, even if you um, don't have the account, you can take a look at what this might look like. And you can see they have a wide range of lessons that are available to you. So, so when I think about Nearpod, and all the pieces that I can go in, um, I would also encourage you to explore your reports because this is where you're going to be able to go in and see like all the different lessons that you did. And even going back five years ago when I ran that, that slide deck, I can get a report out on that particular slide deck that I ran with them and the responses that I got. And so um, this will just give you the reports of the student engagement. So don't miss out on how to get the information back from those particular lessons. And the one that I just ran today, here it is, and of course nobody's really given me feedback but um, yet, but hopefully you'll take a few minutes afterwards to take a look at it. Now I did wanna show you <clears throat> one more thing, and this is uh, something that is new. So you can create lessons in Google Slides. And so when you click on that, it's gonna open up a box and it's gonna ask you to authorize your account. So I'm just gonna close that for a moment because I've already done that. And what I and when you get in there, it, the first thing it does is it gives you the instructions um, for welcome to Nearpod and Google Slides. And here's how it works. It says open and install the Nearpod add-on. And so up in your up here, you may not have noticed because you might not do anything with that, but you can get add-ons for Google Slides. You can also get add-ons for docs and sheets, but but this particular add-on only works here. And you would go down to get add-ons and you would choose the Nearpod one. Now I've already done that. And so you can see it says Nearpod and open Nearpod. And what it's gonna do is it puts a little banner right here. And as I build my slide deck out, I can put in those same Nearpod pieces that you saw the interactivity um, that was there I can now put this in and then I can save it to Nearpod. So if I'm building my slide deck, this is a great place to build it. And if I already have slide decks in Google Slides, this is perfect. All I need to do is add the interactivity from Nearpod over. And so the one thing you'll see is Nearpod slides can't be copy and pasted. So where you create them is where they go. And then you can just, um, like if I add a new slide, then I could be like, I just want to, um, I, I'm gonna do a uh, uh, fill in the, the blanks. And so now it'll edit my slide um, and then you would type and paste in here. So, and then I would just hit in um, the words that I want. So um, it says click the words on the right to add words to the bank. And so like I might just take these things and paste them over and be done with that. And then um, I'm going to close out of that. So then you would just build out those pieces. So this gives you um, a great way to add all of those different content pieces from Nearpod quickly into, um, into Google Slides. So I'm gonna highlight a few things as I go through my, the, the rest of my slide deck here for you. Um, remember that you can add content, web content and activities, and activities is where you get the, um, the real interactivity. There are lots of places you can choose from, from vocabulary to these other questions and even web pages. You can add the interactivity through all of these types of activities. Um, that are in here, like draw it and time to climb and all of that. You want to take a look at the Nearpod lesson library. And when you look at the net lesson library, remember that you can search by subject and grade level specifically. And once you find a lesson you like, you would hit add to my library and then it'll switch over to, to show in my library. Um, and then, um, starting your lessons. And so we had a question that populated into the Q&A pod, which is perfect, which it says is, is Nearpod a place to launch all lessons from, or is it better to use Google Classroom as your base for all activities and use Nearpod as just one type of lesson? Um, and I would say it depends. I, I think that it's probably best 
to use Google Classroom for all of your lessons. And the reason I say that is that you're not always going to have a slide deck and the interactivity. You might have an assignment that you're just going to push out to students and say, um, here, here's like a, a worksheet to work on, or here's a prompt, or here's a website I want you to go read. Whereas Nearpod is really for those rich lessons that you're going to create. So, and, and the nice thing is, remember, right here you can see that you can embed this into Google Classroom. So for me, I would create my entire lesson in Nearpod and then push it to Google Classroom because Google Classroom allows students to go back and forth and submit their work. So that's the workflow that I would recommend. Um, I also want to remind you that you can start live lessons or student-paced lessons. Student-paced lessons are going to really be done at home by the students on their own. The live lessons are going to be done together. Um, when you, when you, if I jump back here, you'll notice again, join.nearpod.com. And this is for a student-paced lesson because it says it's valid for the next 29 days. If you do a live one, it's not going to give you that information, but it's going to give you that same five-digit code that you give to students. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that there's a new feature called um, Quick Launch. And uh, I didn't show it, but it is right here um, on the Nearpod page. So when I go to Nearpod, so if I, if I wanted to create something, you know, I went down here, but that plus does the same thing. But Quick Launch, if I'm working um, with students, I'm doing something like this, I can be like, you know what? I have a quick open-ended question I want. And it, all it does is create the question for you. And so this is a great place for you to, to get that student feedback. So you can quickly create those and immediately share it with your students. That's what Quick Launch does. And then we talked about the Google Slides add-on there. So with that, we're just about out of time. But if you have any questions, I'd encourage you to still put those into the chat for yourselves. Um, I did want to remind you also real quick before we go, uh, as you may be forming any other questions for us, that um, all of our webinars are listed on the um, Learn On site. You can see this is the only webinar for today. Tomorrow, we're involved in some statewide work, so you won't see any webinars tomorrow. But then when we come back to Friday, you'll see we're going to be talking about formative 101. And formative is a great tool for using to uh, solicit student um, uh, uh, comprehension and understanding. It's a great check for understanding. And so you'll see that that coming to you on Friday at 1130 uh, from Nicole. Uh, and then finally, as we do with all of ours, um, I'd encourage you to please give us feedback um, by filling out the uh, uh, by filling out the bit.ly uh, for that. And um, if you want Act 48 credit, you will need to complete the Act 48 form. Um, so I'll populate that in. I'll also drop in one more time, just in case you missed it. That's the code for the, um, for the lesson that I ran on Nearpod. So if you didn't get, get the chance to get it, you can grab it now and you can make use of that. So are there any other questions um, that you might have? I'll wait just a moment or two. But if not, I want to thank you guys for coming and participating with us here. And um, hopefully you got a good sense of what you can do with Nearpod. I know this is really quick. Um, and actually, I'll, uh, while I have a moment here and I wait for any other questions, I would just point out that you can get help on a lot of our other tools here um, that you can see. And for Nearpod, if you Google Nearpod PD, you're going to get a lot of places that you can get information. So with that, I'm going to wish you guys a great afternoon, and I'm going to uh, stop the share and end the webinar, and we look forward to seeing you in our next event.